Hi, I'm Mark Menendez. Thanks for joining me. Today I'll be taking you through some basic techniques and teach you how to draw. Wasn't there a time when you were an artist? Can you remember that? It was probably back in first grade. You know, your first drawings? Back then, in that classroom, everyone was an artist, you know? You'd take these crayons, these jumbo crayons, and you'd make that picture of your house. You know, and use that nice brown crayon for the trunk of the tree, and don't forget grass. Do not judge the rest of this video from this drawing, please, because I'm going to teach you a lot more than that. So what is line? Line does a couple of things. It divides an area or space. So if I want to divide something, I can take a ruler like this and just make a line. And that divides this space from this space. I could make a little window in here just by dividing up that space. It doesn't have to be straight lines either, you know. It can be, uh, it can be curvilinear lines. You can divide a space up that way. So that's one use of line. But most of drawing is what you're doing is you're defining the edges and contours of forms. I'm going to write that word here for us, forms, because this is going to be an important word to us as we go along. So when you look at something, an apple or an orange, it is a solid object in space. You know, air around it, solid object. So what you're doing when you draw an apple is you're drawing a solid object defining its contours, its edges. Now, if you just put an apple there, it's kind of floating. I see a lot of drawing this way. But I want you to start thinking a little bit more of recording or drawing the space and the objects and the things around other objects in the picture. So don't just focus on the one form. Think about the space around it and how it's, how it's done. Now I have the word halftone here and it's important because Halftone is kind of exactly what it sounds like. It's that, it's that tone that's right in the middle of everything else. It's important to kind of capture that. Sometimes you want to almost lay that in first, and I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. And then you see here I have deep shadow, and this is a wonderful tone here that we'll talk about later. It's reflected light and cast shadow. So one of the best ways to kind of learn values and tones is to make a value scale. And I've made one for you right here. I want you to look at it. It's rather large. It's a big piece of paper, and I've done that for the purposes of this video. But I want you to learn how to make one of these. So take a piece of paper. And one of the basic ways you can do this is to just grab a pencil and start as light as you possibly can, just doing a little patch. And you'll see that my pencil keeps overlapping, coming back over a previous tone. And what I'm doing, I'm trying to make it darker as I continue through until I get to a very, very black color. Now there's all your values. You've got a good range of values through there. You could probably even get a little lighter. good lights and there's not so good lights. So I'm going to show you some of the good ones first. A three-quarter top light is a classic lighting and this is where you have light coming from this direction. You can see that you have a good sense of form and reflected light. The tabletop is reflecting back into the bottom side of the sphere and the other objects. It's a classic lighting. It's one of the best. A top lighting is a good one too. It's a little bit from the front and it gives you good reflection and good form as well. 
This next one I'm going to show you is going to remind you of what you see sometimes, especially on the sphere, and that is a little crescent appearing on the top of the sphere. That's called top back lighting, and that's a very effective lighting as well. The side that faces you gets illuminated slightly from the reflected light. Now, a moment ago, I showed you a three-quarter top side light, but this is a three-quarter side, and this is a good light, too. You get a little bit more shadow on the objects themselves. This is a carpenter's pencil, and you can find this in art stores, but it's also available in some of those home improvement stores as well, and you might find a nice sharpener for them there as well. But anyway, I'm going to take this pencil, and you see it's kind of broad, and what I'm going to do is I'm kind of lay out just with darks and lights an example of this picture. Now, as you can see, I've taken a piece of paper and divided it into four little windows. Think of those of little windows that you look through, an aperture, so that you can include that in there. And what I want to try to do is reproduce the tones that you see in here, because pattern, like this, automatically forms a composition. So if I just block in the shapes of the tones that are in here, you will automatically get a form of composition, so you don't have to work too hard at it. Sometimes just looking at the beautiful scene in front of you and recording it as you see it is a great way to create a composition. So here we have the fog. I'm going to use a little different stroke vertical instead of that diagonal stroke, make it a little lighter. And then I'm going to come in with the trees. Now I'm going to use the broadness of that pencil in order to capture some of the texture of those trees. If you did this with a pointed pencil, it might not appear so easy. Now, one of the things to remember when you're doing landscapes is that landscapes comp are comprised of five main areas. You have usually sky or distant forms. You have very, very distant forms like mountains in the, in the horizon. You have middle ground, you have foreground, and then you have point of interest. And in this picture, you have maybe more than one point of interest. One is primary and the other one is secondary. Uh, the mountain right here, because of its darkness, shows up very well. And the texture of these trees also add a lot to that as well. So this quick sketch, and you see I'm doing it very, very quickly, it gives you a very quick composition when you do that. So don't allow that to hold you back. It's a great place, a great resource for doing art from. Now, what to avoid with it? Well. You don't have to be a slave to the photograph. Remember, detail is not as important as the big picture. That's what you want to do. So I'm going to take this photograph here. This is a beautiful Japanese garden that I got to visit. And I have a picture mat here. Again, you can purchase one of these in any art store. It has that window in there. And I'm going to use that picture mat in order to make the aperture for my drawing just makes it much easier. It's the same size as the piece of paper that I'm using, and it gives me a nice even border all the way around. So one of the things I want to do is I want to look at the pattern that's going on here with lights and darks. And you can see in here that there's a backdrop of dark trees, but some of the darkest places are on this pagoda-shaped structure. And we have some rocks down here and even one tree here that's a little darker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this graphite stick, and I'm going to use it to kind of block in a dark back in here. With the stick, you can go much faster than you can with a pencil. If you do want to use your pencil, remember, you can use the side of the pencil and get a lot of tone in there as well. 
So block that in. I'm looking for big shapes, lights and darks. You see the peak of that roof is a little lighter than the backdrop, the trees. Getting this tight spot here. I'm just going to sketch in that basic form. It's triangular. And here's a little perspective. I'm looking at it and catching the angles, seeing that that goes off into the distance a little bit there. And it's very dark under there. 